listen, listen. Psalm 24 says this. The earth is God's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. For he found it on the seas and established it on the waters. The word of God says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of Glory might come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of Glory. Come on, people of God, give God praise today as we get into worship. Hallelujah! Good morning, Kingsbridge. I said, good morning, Four Line. Good morning, D-Line. Good morning, the body of Christ. Come on. You see, if you're from the Bronx, someone has offered you a Bible and get one 50% off deal. Am I right or am I wrong? Come on. Who's ready to worship today? Who's ready to worship today? Come on. We're going to make some sounds here today. The ground is going to tremble. People are going to hear the sounds through their cars, through their buildings. We're going to proclaim the name of Jesus, not just in this area, but to the entire world right now. question for you guys. You ready? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I see lightning, I see thunder. I see lightning, I see thunder.
King is alive. Who believe that there's still miracles happening today. Because the grave is empty. Because my Savior is moving. Come on. He moves within every single one of us. Don't miss the opportunity to be used by the Great One. The Mighty One. Just thank you, God. Lord, you are the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God. The Prince of Peace, God. We pray that over this neighborhood, God. We pray this for every single year to hear, God. There's a longing for peace in this world, God. We pray that they may accept you as their Savior, as their King. Because everything that we lack, everything that we lack is just completed in you, God. We, lack, we don't lack a single thing in your presence, God. We just ask for more of you, God. To pour out through us, to pour out to every single ear, every single eye in this street, God. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The man some for my life, oh, he is my soul. Cause you are good, you're good. Oh, cause you are good. You are good, you're good. Oh, cause you are good, you're good. Oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my soul. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo in my days. Oh, he is my soul. Let's sing it. You are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. You're good, oh, cause you are good, you're good, oh, let's sing it out, cause you are good, you're good, oh, cause you are good, you're good, You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let
the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Savior of the world. Oh, hail King Jesus. Come on, let me hear you. Jesus over. Cause I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, break every stronghold, time to through the shadows, burn like a fire, your name is power, your name is power. Your name is healing, name 
So I'm gonna need you in this part. You ready? Because we're gonna shout Jesus over every rooftop in this place. We're gonna shout Jesus to the highest valleys, the highest mountains. Come on, we're gonna shout Jesus over everyone's circumstances, not only for ourselves, but we're gonna shout the name of Jesus over every family, every single building, every single person in this place. You ready? Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, oh, for every enemy, and Jesus for our family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. We could do a little better than that. The sound Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the dark, so for every enemy, and Jesus for our families, I speak the holy name, Jesus. So Jesus from the mountain, oh Jesus in soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name cause your name is power cause your name is healing your name is life if you believe that come on every voice every voice in this place break the every strong hope Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Cause your name is, cause your name is, God, believe it, come on, your name is life. Break every stronghold, God. Shine through the shadow, burn like a fire.
believe that tonight, this, eve, this afternoon, that Jesus can break every stronghold. That he can break every chain. We're out here today believing that the God that we serve, Jesus our Savior, can break every stronghold. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It, it, just, it doesn't matter to him. That's why he sent his son to die on the cross for all sin. It doesn't matter. And sometimes we say, I got to get myself right. I got to do this. I got to do that. You don't have to do anything. Jesus did it all. And all that he asked you is to come. And I'm going to speak in Spanish because we have a very big Spanish community. En esta tarde, el Señor está aquí y te está llamando. Y te está diciendo, no importa donde tú estás hoy, no importa lo que tú has hecho. Yo di mi vida para ti en la cruz. Yo derramé mi sangre para ti en la cruz. Y te amo, te amo, te amo. Por eso que di mi vida en la cruz del Calvario. So hoy, no importa donde tú estás, no importa donde tú te encuentres, Dios está aquí. Y Dios quiere y te está invitando que venga, que venga, porque Él te ama. Aleluya. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Do you believe that this morning? Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Lord, break. Break every Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Oh, I speak Jesus Oh, I speak Jesus. Oh, I speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow, you guys, I wish you could see yourself. You look beautiful with the sun shining. The Son of God and the Son created by our Heavenly Father. Shining upon you, shining upon this community. Because we know that God is doing something here in the Kingsbridge community. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Te damos gloria, Señor! Te alabamos, Señor! En este día! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! El Cordero de Dios! Hallelujah! 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 You can be seated. Amen. We want to welcome you all here. Wow, we got a lot of folks here today. Hallelujah. But more importantly, we want to welcome our community to come. This is an open invitation. Te estamos invitando. Vengan, vengan. No importa donde tú estás, donde te encuentres. Aquí hay sillas. Si no hay sillas, se busca silla para que esté aquí, para que oiga la palabra de Dios. We're here. I told them, let's come in, come in. 
We don't have chairs. We'll find chairs. But God wants to, you, we want you to hear God's word. Because how many believe that God is breaking things today? In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we want to welcome you, Kingsbridge community. The D line, the four line. What other line? The number nine bus. Ah, you nine forgot bus, that, huh? Yeah, the Beat 12 that. bus. Uh, the 12 bus, the 15 bus, you know. Bus. Uh, the 22. Okay, ah, right, 22. Right, 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 right. Amen. The three bus. <laughs> All right, you forgot all of that, right? Bailey Taxi. Oh, Bailey Taxi. Amen. They've, they've always been there. If you're visiting us for the first time, will you let us know by raising your hand? We want to acknowledge anybody that's just come in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Toby. So good to see you. Toby's here, Donnie's son. Anyone else visiting us for the first time? We have something that we want you to remember this day. So if you keep your hands raised, or so our ushers can give you. We have a connect card in there. We ask you to fill it out and give it back to one of our ushers. So ushers, can you raise your hands so people know that you're ushering today? Ushers, amen. Amen. And that way we know who you are. And if you have a prayer request, we ask that you um, put down whatever request you have. Amen. With that said, can you turn to someone and say, so glad that you're here today. Si hay alguna persona que esta es la primera vez que están aquí, estamos pidiendo que nos dejen saber para darle un regalito para que usted se recuerde que estuvieron aquí en este día. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Olga. This is Pastor Olga from Fordham Manor Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is Pastor Vinny over here. Would you raise your hand, Pastor Vinny? Amen. <clears throat> and my name is Pastor Joe. I'm the senior pastor of Fordham Manor Church. Uh, our church is out th is over there. Uh, but today, God has brought us into the community. God said that we, the church needs to meet outside the walls. The church needs to, to make an impact on the community. So that's what we're doing. We're out here telling you that Jesus loves you. God has a plan and purpose for your life. And this is just the beginning. Tell your neighbor, this is just the beginning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to, uh, again, welcome everybody. We have services on Sundays in that building at 11 a.m. We do have heat in there. We're not out here because we don't have heat. Uh, so it, I'm glad that, uh, that we could be out here today. But please, come back and join us. Worship with us every Sunday at 11 o'clock. We just wanted to give you a taste of what God is doing in our midst. We have a God that we love so much, and he's doing so much in our midst. We want you to know what he's about. He's an awesome God. He is a good God. He is extending his hands out to you, and he has more than you can even ima imagine or even ask for. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. It is so good to be with you. Lord, we have today a beautiful testimony. Uh, I'm going to ask Joanna. Somebody welcome Joanna. Praise God for her. She's got an amazing testimony that she wants to share with everyone here today. Come on up, Joanna. Hi, God bless you, everyone. This is amazing. This is amazing. We are the church and we get to be outside. How amazing is that? I am in awe of what God did, okay? When, I don't even know where to begin. The devil has been after at my life before I was in my mother's womb, while I was in my mother's womb. Her family told her, abort her. You have too many kids. You got to abort her. When my mom gave birth to me, this nurse tried to, this, this lady tried to tie something around my feet. And I couldn't stop screaming. And, I was, and they took me to the doctor and they told her if, they, if you would have left it on any longer, she would have died. I grew up in a very abusive home. My dad was extremely abusive. He terrorized us. And, you know, I wanted nothing more as a child just to die and not exist. But as a child, I knew there was a purpose for my life. I don't know what it was, but this, this, I just had this feeling. And I would always pray. And I didn't know anything about prayer, but God touched me. As I got older, I started selling drugs at 12. I dropped out of school. And then I tried, I started doing drugs. I started off with weed and, and, and cocaine. And, and the next thing you know, I ran away from home. And I'm this 12 year old little girl who was selling poison to the community. Didn't know what I was doing, looking for love in all the wrong places. I had a baby at, four, at 15. 
And while I was pregnant, my, my daughter's father would beat me and terrorize me. So I tried to commit suicide again. Because I thought to myself, if he beat me now, then he's going to try to kill me. He's going to try to hurt my daughter. So I might as well just take his ball. I hated everything about myself. I hated the way I look. I hated the way I sound. I had so much hatred. And that same man that terrorized my family, that was the same man that told me about Jesus. That was the same man that brought the gospel to me. And I'm thinking like, you? You got Jesus in your life? And no matter what I did, and how, no matter how much I pushed my father away, he would just continue to love on me. And, and it was just extraordinary. I remember one time my dad was out here evangelizing and he calls my sister and myself and he's like, you know, there's these people trying to start beef with us and we're ready to come out and fight. And my dad's like, oh, they left. So here, hand out some tracks and we're ready to fight. Like, seriously? So, you know, literally do rag on, Vaseline, the whole nine, you know? And my dad will always tell me about this Jesus guy. And I'm like, all right, puppy, I'm gonna I'm come to Jesus, but I need to get right. I gotta stop doing drugs, I gotta stop partying, I have so much living to do. But can I tell you something, I never felt more dead when I was in the world. I tried Santeria, I tried so many things to, to feel that love. I tried so many things. And then as I got older, I continued on with drugs. I started continuing sniffing coke, popsy, pop, popping oxycodone, taking 30 pills in one day. The amount of alcohol I drank, and then I remember I came, my friend, after getting high, my friend, my friend gave me some pills because I couldn't, like, I couldn't calm down. She said, you're gonna be good, don't worry. She gives me these pills, I'm in the cab, and I knew I was gonna die that day. My heart, the way it felt, it was, ridiculous and I get home and I'm like Lord I know I'm gonna die but I'm sorry I'm so sorry and I remember getting up for, to go to the bathroom and I fell on my face and I don't even remember but I just remember looking to my to my left and I saw my daughter there and I'm like Lord and my my husband's asking me what's wrong with you and I'm like no nothing I'm fine and I went to bed knowing and believing, thinking that I was gonna die. And when I woke up, I was so surprised that I'm still alive. Like, I literally woke up like, and looked around like, no, I'm still alive. And I remember once again, my dad telling me about this Jesus. And y'all, I hated this Jesus. Every time he would tell me about him, I just wanted to rip out his throat because that's how oppressed I was. And I remember coming to Florida Manor because there was a boot camp. And I know it sounds scary, right? I thought Pastor was, Joe was gonna shout and talk about dropping, give me 20, give me some Bible verses. I was terrified, y'all. I'm like, boot camp, dad, I don't know about all that. You know, but when I came in here, I felt the love of God. I felt so accepted, so just loved on. I remember Eileen loving on me and, and my perspective on the world and everything was shifted. And I still continue to drink. After giving my life to the Lord, after getting baptized, I still continue to drink and I told God, Lord, if you don't take this from me, I'm going to die from this. And I know that and I can't give it up on my own. I could not give it up on my own. And I remember the Lord reminding me that I committed a murder. And that was one of my open doors. I had an abortion when I was 17 because I thought I couldn't take care of this baby and how dare I try to give her to the system when she'll probably be terrorized or something like that. So I had an abortion. So I began my journey on healing. And the first day I missed it and I was like, you know what, Lord, I really want this. So I'm just gonna fast from alcohol. And I fasted and I've been clean for five years. I have not drank for five years. So can I do it on my own? Absolutely not. I could not do it on my own. But I did it with Jesus. I surrendered my life to Jesus. You don't have to clean yourself up. Somebody hearing me right now, you do not have to come to the church clean. You just have to come. He said, come unto me, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden. And, I, and the Lord just reminded me of this. I remember while I was still drinking, and still in the Lord, I was drunk, I was so drunk one time, and, and the Lord met me where I was. I was so drunk and I just saw like this black all around me and he showed me each and every one of my friends and he said Joanna where are they 
Joanna, where's your mother? Where's Vanessa? When do they call you? When do they love you? Is that real love? And I remember Psalms 139, for not even the darkness is darkness to you. No matter where you hide, no matter what hole you try to dig yourself in, that's not even darkness to God. You can't even, you're not even powerful enough to keep yourself from God. Whoa. Why? Because Jesus died for you. Yes. He died for you. So here I am five years later, clean, sober, married, a leader. The Lord has taken me. I used to hate my name. Joanna, I just, I used to call my, they used to call me Jay or Baby Jay or Lady Jay. Jay, I hated the name Joanna. If you call me Joanna, I wanted to fight. I had so much anger. But the Lord showed me my name meant God's grace. Woo! Joanna, God's grace. So please, if you're out here today, know that God has abundant grace for you. He came to give you life and life everlasting. Yes. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Joanna, for sharing that beautiful testimony about the risen Jesus Christ. How many know today that Jesus is alive? Amen? And she's proof of that. Amen? And I'm proof of that. And you're proof of that today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have my brother Justin. Where is he? He's hiding around here somewhere. He's a deacon in our church body. He's a young man, but he's really anointed. Him and his wife are really anointed. They lead our teen and young adults ministry, but he has an amazing testimony he wants to share. Thank you, Pastor Joe. God bless everyone. It's really a, a tremendous blessing just to be here in front of my community. You know, I used to live in this building right over here, along with Pastor Vinny. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, my, my story is, is maybe some story that, you know, everyone here can relate with or some people can relate with. You know, I grew up uh, in a non-Christian home. My mom was uh, a believer but backslidden. Uh, but my grandfather was a prominent uh, he was a prominent leader in my life. Uh, I would often stay in his house. Some of you, some of you know him, uh, John Malloy. And I would stay in his house, and he would always, you know, I would go there as an eight-year-old kid and, you know, try to mess with him and, you know, be, being a kid, you know? And uh, he would always be in his room reading the Word. He would always. And he would take me down, and he would read Psalm 23 to me. So that seed was planted, you know? The Bible talks about uh, raise your child up in the ways of the Lord, and he shall not depart. But, you know, like life happens and you go through life. And, you know, as a teenager, I dropped out of high school. Uh, when I, at the age of 17, I was heavily in the streets. I would uh, drink, smoke. I sold drugs. Uh, I, 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 I did everything. I was completely lost. But one of the very things that because the word was planted in me, every night or almost every night I would go home, there would always be like God on my shoulder. And if you die today, where are you going? There was that word planted, and, and I would be drunk, and it'll always be God. If you die today, where are you going? And you know, we, we, and of course, I kept on doing what I what what I was doing. And you want to talk about God uh, being there for us when we're not even thinking about it? it says yet, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And in this very building. Cops came to get me off of a charge that had nothing to do with me. I was I was being picked up for five, for five counts of armed robbery, and it was it really wasn't me. So the cops took me down, and I'm thinking it's something you know that I did otherwise. So I'm like, okay, just, it's it's regular, you know. So I go down to the precinct, and the detective says, hey, we got you for five counts of armed robbery. You robbed many bodegas, and you pistol whipped a pregnant woman. I said, whoa. I said, listen, that, you, that this ain't me. And I was probably like 17, 18 around there. I said, it's not me. You're going to have to show me the video. He pulls out the laptop and he shows me a video. And lo and behold, this brother looks like me. And now I'm scared. So the whole, the, the, you know, the whole time he's, you know, being a good cop, he's passing me a cigarette. He's like, hey, brother. And I'm like, listen, I didn't do this. I didn't. Mind you, I wasn't in church. I wasn't seeking God. I, I just wasn't. And the next day, now we're in the one-way mirror. You have to, like, do a lineup. So now I'm in the one-way mirror, and here we are. And the guy says, listen, if even one, if even one of these people say 
I think it's him. You're going. You're going. You're, I mean, you're going right to to the island. You're going to right right to Rikers. So you know, it's the moment of truth. I'm lining up, this and that, and then I come out, and the guy says, "Man, you're so lucky." Because the person that came to see you says that he knows you and that you didn't do none of this. And still to this day, I never found out who it was. But I believe that whatever God did, God shielded this man's eyes. Or maybe this person really knows you. So you want to talk about divine appointments. God had me even when I wasn't even thinking about him. For someone to say, no, I know him. And of course, I went back to doing what I do, back to the streets. But then God started working in my heart. And I met my, my wife and we both felt called together. God was calling us together. And we come from a long list of just family drama, you know, things. But God started doing a healing in our lives. And we gave ourselves to, to Christ in 2010. But it's been a journey from there. But one thing that I want to encourage everyone here. It, listen, God loves you just the way you are. Plain and simple, just the way you are. Well, God, I got to leave this baggage here. Well, God, I have to do this. Oh, God, no, 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 no. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. Don't take away what God did for you because you want to drop something off before you go to him. God can handle that. Because the more you step to him, the more those things are going to come off if you allow him. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Justin. What a powerful testimony. And there are so many testimonies here, and each of us have a testimony about the grace of God. Can I get an amen from somebody who's been touched by the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? Uh, I want to welcome everybody who just joined us. Perhaps uh, you're just joining us from the street. My name is Pastor Joe, and I'm the, the, the senior pastor of Florida Manor Church right over there. We're here outside today because the Lord impressed upon our hearts that he wants to reach somebody that is out in the community. He wants the world to know, and he wants this neighborhood to know that Jesus is Lord for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are going to go straight into the Bible today. Jesus told parables or stories to explain what God was like. And one of the most amazing stories that he shared was the story of the prodigal son. And, um, and today we're going to be in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15 and Elder Gloria is going to read the word and pray. Open our eyes, gracious Lord, as we turn to your word. We long to know you, to understand life, and to be changed. Examine us, Lord, by the floodlight of your truth. Amen. Luke 15, the parable of the lost sheep. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them? Then Jesus told them this parable, a simple story. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine? in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it and when he finds it he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says rejoice with me i have found my lost sheep i tell you in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. The parable of the lost coin. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp 
sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The parable of the lost son. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off to a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said, to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For, his, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fattened calf because he, ha he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But, the answer, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet, you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the holy word of God. Praise be to you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The title of my message today is Lost and Found. And in the beginning of the passage that we just read, Jesus was speaking to church people. And the church people wondered why Jesus hung around with people they considered messed up. You see, Jesus spent time with people that were a little bit sketchy. Anybody know anybody sketchy today? Come on, tell the truth. Amen. 
I came here to tell somebody that Jesus didn't come for those who have it all together. He came for those who know that there is something wrong with the world and the problem is within me. If you're with me today, say amen. amen. In response to the church people, Jesus shared stories that highlighted the way God looks at people who aren't perfect. Amen. And in our time together, we're going to look at four different types of lost people that Jesus came for. Jesus came to rescue those who lost their way. Jesus came to rescue those abused by others. He came to rescue those who reject God. And he came to those who think they have it all together. So first, Jesus came to rescue those who lost their way. Someone say, rescue me. Oh, that was lame. Come on, somebody. Work with me here. Somebody say, rescue me. The first story that we just read was about one sheep who wanders off from the flock and he gets lost. I don't know how many, how the sheep got lost. Maybe the sheep got distracted texting while on the street. Who knows what I'm talking about? You're just texting and you don't even know where you're at, right? When my little, my nephew was little and he started walking, he would walk around and he had no sense of his surroundings at all. And he was like the Energizer Bunny meeting a crash test dummy. You know what I'm talking about, right? All you had to do was put him down and he was off to the races and he'd find danger in the house, no matter what we did to make it kid proof, right? We swore we put away the scissors, but somehow we found the scissors, right? That's how sheep behave. They wander from the flock and away from safety. Sheep are defenseless animals who have no way of protecting themselves from the wolves and no way of finding food or water on their own. The Bible says that we are all like sheep. We need a sheep in the house. If you're a sheep, say bye. I also came to those who have intentionally rejected God. Tell your neighbor, he's talking about you. You don't want to hear that today, but I want to tell you, there is a rebel without a cause in all of us. Amen? We make movies about the rebel. We look up to them. We want to be down with them. We want to date them and even be like them. Amen? Some present here today within the sound of my voice are the real Slim Shady. Come on, who knows what I'm talking about today? Right? If you grew up being the rebel at home and on the block and in the school, would you raise your hand because you're a rebel? You want everybody to know that you were the rebel. Amen? Tell the truth, shape the devil, somebody. Amen? That's right. The prodigal son in Jesus' story was tired of living in his wealthy father's house. He wanted to be part of a motorcycle gang. He wanted to sleep with whoever he wanted to sleep with. Get high, whatever was being passed around. And he didn't want his dad in his business. Who knows what I'm talking about today? Some of you are like, yeah, that's right. I don't want my parents in my business. <laughs> The dad did not smack him and tell him, son, I brought you out of the world and I want to take you out. Right? Some of you would have been like that, that you, what? Okay. Instead, the dad gave him what he wanted. According to Jewish, Jewish custom, when the dad gave him his wish, he became dead to the father and to the family. This was serious business. The son took the father's money and he partied like it was 1999. Tell your neighbor, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Amen? Every day he spent his money in the clubs. He had lots of friends because he had money. Right? And I'm sure he never woke up sober. Then something happened. The economy crashed. He ran out of money. Then his friends, uh, the friends that he thought he had disappeared. How many know today, when you got money, you got friends? But when you don't got money, they're nowhere to be found, right? With no friends, no money, no job, except feeding a pig, he hit rock bottom. Today, there's someone who has hit rock bottom. It might be a financial rock bottom. You once had money, and now you don't. It may be an emotional rock bottom. You've been stuck in depression and anxiety. Maybe the rock bottom that you're experiencing today is an addiction. It was fun when you started, but now the party is over and all you have is an expensive habit. Rock bottom can be a feeling of being empty. Maybe life has disappointed you on. You believed in the American dream, but now you're tired of running around in circles, 
chasing after your tail. The rebel, the younger son, woke up from the pigsty and said, I had it better in my father's house. He knew that he was dead to his father and his family. But he thought maybe, maybe my father will hire me to clean the toilets in his house. The younger son was humbled and broke because of his own mistakes. He had no one to blame but himself. How many of us have made mistakes in our life where the only person that we can blame is this person? Come on, somebody, get out of denial. Denial is not just a river in Egypt, amen? Some of us today, we know we made the mistakes. We have nobody else to blame, even though we try. The young man made his way home. He didn't expect the father to be looking for him, but he was. Tell your neighbor right now, God was looking for the young man. The rebel rehearsed his story to dad. Dad, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. He was going to make him say, look, make me one of my servants. But the dad cut him off. The father looked at the raggedy old clothes he had on and he gave him new clothes. He kissed him with joy and affection that was reserved for somebody that you thought was dead. But suddenly has come back to life. Some of you are wondering if you could come back to church with the past that you have. And the answer is yes. You're wondering today, Pastor, it's been years, but God the Father has been looking for you. God the Father has been looking for you. You've done many things, and you know that you're wrong today, but friends, come to Jesus. He's been looking for you. But I've done too many things, Pastor. I've got to get my life straight first. And that's what Joanna said. She thought she had to get her life in order. But I came here to let you know today that Jesus says, come as you are. But he loves you too much to leave you the same. If you're with me today, so give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When the sun returned, there was a party in the household. Tell your neighbor, there was a party in the household. There was rejoicing because the, the, the dead, the son that was dead, has now come back to life. God had given him and restored him to the family. Real quickly though, as we close, I want to speak to those of you who I believe you have it together without God. Without Christ. You're a moral person. You know other people need God, but me, I, I'm good. You're wondering about this whole idea of God. Why is he important? You see no need to worship God on Sundays. That's something that my, my grandparents did. That's something my parents said. But I, I don't need to do this. Maybe you think God should accept you on your own terms. But I'm here to tell you today that there were two brothers. There was a prodigal son who came home and understood his need for God. But then there was an older brother who was outside the house and said, you know what? You owe me. And I came here to tell you today that those of us who think we're good right today, I want to tell you that the Bible says that no one is good. We all fall short of the glory of God. God alone is worthy of our worship today. And if you're living life thinking that you got everything together, I want to let you know today you're mistaken. We need to worship God. There is a hole in our hearts and God is drawing you to Him today. It is time to, to lay down your pride and say, you know what? I'm good, but only God is really good. I need a savior in my life today. Tell your, your neighbor right now, I, you need a savior. I need a savior. We all need a savior today. Amen? God the Father is throwing a party in heaven today. I'm anticipating that in advance. Come on. Amen. Somebody with me here today? Give up your pride. Give up your know-it-all attitude. Give up going your own way. In closing, I'm going to ask the worship team if they'll come forward at this time. Any, any, worship, any worship leaders here? Praise the Lord. Jesus says to all of us, come as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the same way. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to the Father. The Word of God says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting to life. Amen? Amen. 
friends, do you find yourself in darkness? Jesus is the light of the world. Are you trapped? Jesus delivers us from bondage. Are you lost? Jesus has been looking for you. He said this crazy church from the walls here, out here to tell you that he loves you and that he has a plan and purpose for your life. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Because whoever believes in him shall not have perished, but have eternal life. Jesus is reaching out to you today. It doesn't matter what your story it is. He's saying, come. Jesus is calling out to you today and saying, you know what? You don't have it all together. Even though you have the American dream, there is something missing in your life. And that's him. I'm going to ask if you bow your heads right now. And I'm going to ask our worship team, prayer team leaders to come forward at this time. Because this is a holy moment here. This is a holy moment. Just bow your heads with me if you don't mind. Don't worry about the, the who's coming up front. This is a holy moment. God is reaching out to you right now. And he wants you to come forward at this time. He wants you to acknowledge that you have fallen short of his glory. He wants you to know that you have been found today. You've been lost. You've been looking for love in all the wrong places. Today is a day of salvation. Today is the beginning of a new day for you. So with every head bowed, I want to speak to the person right now who has been lost. You've been wandering. You may have even been coming to church on a weekly basis, but you have no direction. You need a direction from the Holy Spirit today. If that's you, would you just indicate it by raising your hand? Say, you know what? I need God. I see you, bro. I see your hand, brothers. God bless you. Amen. If you are here today and you're not, you can identify with Joanna's story. You have been abused by people around you that should have cared. If that's you, would you indicate it by raising your hand? Say, you know what? I'm hurt. I'm broken inside. I need Jesus in my life. If you're here today and you can identify with a rebel, you've just been doing you. And it's not getting you anywhere. I want to ask you to raise your hand and say, you know what, Pastor Joe, I'm busted. I'm the rebel today. It's not working out for me. I need God. Amen. And lastly, I want to pray for those of you who came here today thinking you're a good person, thinking that you had it all together. But God's revealing today, you don't have it all together without me. There's a way that seems right to man, but in the end it leads to destruction. And I want to reward somebody today. You think the path that you're going on, you think is right and is good. But today God is, is leading you in a new direction. Won't you respond to him? Won't you respond to him? Those of you who raised your hand, I'm going to ask you right now to do a bold thing. Come forward right now and join me. I want to shake your hand right now. I want to, we want to pray for you. Amen. Amen. God, praise God. Praise God. God bless you. God. Lord bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Folks, stop praying. I want to pray over these people. Listen. Stay here. Stay here right now. We want to pray over them. We want to pray a special blessing over them. A anybody else? There's room at the altar right now. Just come forward. Don't worry about your friends. Don't worry about your neighbors. Right now. Every person that is in front of me, I'm going to ask you to raise up your hands right now. Raise up your hands because we're, we're just calling out to God right now. We're calling out to God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would bless every person that is coming out right now, Lord God, with the power of the grace of love and mercy. I thank you that there are no coincidences right now.